Several years ago, a friend gave me this book, A Thousand and One Comics You Must Read Before You Die. And at that time in my life, I was getting a little tired of just reading superhero comics, and this is exactly what I needed. I discovered that there were comics from all over the world that I'd never heard of before, and stuff dating back over 120 years. This was an eye-opener for me, and I'm going to share some of my selections that I consider some of my favorite comics that I found uh, thanks to this book. So I hope that you join me and give some, some new comics a chance. You might be surprised at what you might like. My hope for this series is that I'll do one book per decade, and so I'll start in the early 1900s, and when I get to present day, I'll loop back around and start from the early 1900s again. So, first video here, I've got, um, this is actually the largest book in my collection too, in terms of page size. Little Nemo in Slumberland, look how large this one is. Uh, what I love about this book is that it is an actual size of a newspaper. And back in this day and age, uh, in the early 1900s, newspapers would dedicate one full page for just one comic strip. Very, very different from what we see today when you get cram as many comic strips onto one page as you possibly can. Little Nemo in Slumberland is by Windsor McKay, one of the pioneers in comic and animation. And uh, his strip debuted in 1905. It's not the first strip he did. He did a few different other strips, but this is the one that has brought him the most fame. And boy, it is just an absolutely beautiful book. Each page is intricately detailed with some of the most fantastic fantasy art that you'll ever see. The premise of this strip is that each page, this little boy, Nemo, falls asleep, as you'll see in the top corner, and then he'll have an adventure in a magical land called Slumberland, where he'll meet a whole bunch of people and, and, and go on crazy adventures. And then at the very end of the strip, in the bottom corner, he'll wake up. And so that would be it. Each Sunday newspaper page would be one full adventure, he'll wake up. And as the strip progressed, the, the, the adventures became kind of multi-part and would carry on week by week. But he'd always wake up in the end. This book is huge and it's, and it's beautiful, but it's not cheap because of its high quality paper and, and uh, the, just the massive size of it. Um, they did two volumes that collect most of the Little Nemo and Slumberland strips. And because this strip is so old, it's in the public domain, so it's been reprinted many times. You're bound to find some cheaper versions out there, uh, but this size, I believe, is the only size that reprints it at the actual newspaper size. You can see every fine detail. The printing, the restoration, and the scanning is just absolutely pristine. I really, really love it. This is such a great book. So if you can afford it, or if you can find a good deal, or if you find another edition that's cheaper and more suited to your, uh, to your bookshelves, uh, I totally recommend Little Nemo in Slumberland by Windsor McKay.